be great. <laughs> Welcome, y'all, to episode 31. It's Friday, December 2nd. Christmas season, like, even Merry for the Bahamut Christmas. people, yeah. is actually here. Yeah, I love it. So we're going to be decorating the warehouse. Um, oh, dang, I better do that today. We've got our Christmas party for Foundation tomorrow. So Come on. Uh, we're excited about it. Christmas is in full swing at Foundation. Now, Hunter is you, a big Christmas guy. Me too. Yeah. Where do you stand on the Christmas debate? Like, I'm pro Christmas, if that's the debate you're asking. Uh, but as far as like when's too early, is that, that what you're one, asking? That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I love, if it were up to me, I would probably do Christmas stuff before Thanksgiving. Um, but I don't want to be pretentious either. So we kind of wait till like the day after Thanksgiving, the weekend, it's Christmas time. That's fair. And I, I feel like it, as an in the bag podcast, mm -hmm. this is a, this is an appropriate question. Are y'all a Santa family? Uh, no, we're not. Okay. We, we don't do Santa. We actually, I encourage my kids to give gifts to the less fortunate and just remember like how fortunate we are. So we go like the opposite way of Santa per se. So that's what we do. What about you? Heard you? you heard it here first, everybody. Uh, obviously, all business Brad is a better person than all of you, uh, <laughs> but no, not no, in not a pretentious true. way. He just literally is that good of a guy. Um, obviously, you all don't have kids yet, but what do you think you all will lean to with your kids? So we grew up like my my in laws did a thing where half the gifts came from Santa, half the gifts came from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a world where everything came from Santa. Got so it. if I had to guess, we're going to lean towards the in-laws. Um, mm -hmm. But also my grandparents were always Santa Claus. Mm. So my parents never really had to carry that burden. So now that like yeah. grandkids are entering the picture, mm -hmm. my parents have taken on that burden. So Gotcha. I think I got a little traumatized, like from the shock of finding out that Santa was a lie. And I took it Fair. as a lie, not as like, hey, he's not real. Of course, it's, he's not real. But it was like um, I was lied to. So. That's probably where that comes from. That's but fair, anyway, fair. no one likes being lied to. Uh, yeah. No one likes having false things. But speaking of false things, we do have a, an ad read. Thankfully, we have a sponsor for today's video before we bring in our guests. How's that sound? Yep. Let's talk about it. All right. Well, uh, excited today for Aura. The They've been sponsoring the podcast, this podcast and the other foundation podcast for a while. So we're excited to have them back on board. Um, so Aura it has an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. Uh, Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the so-called dark web where criminals sell stolen information. They look at your emails for passwords, social security numbers, uh, it even alerts you fast if they find anything. Um, so I know when I first originally did this, I did scan the dark web. I did find like one password leak or something from a, an old email. I uh, wasn't too worried about that. But the thing I do love about it is, uh, so my wife and I, uh, refinanced our, our house recently. And, um, obviously why wouldn't you because of the market? Right. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, what I loved about it is anytime, um, they like checked credit or there was like a password created or something was uh, done with our mortgage. I actually got alerts from um, Aura as well. Um, wow. So I was very, very, and um, I reset my bank password recently and I got an alert from Aura, which wow. was great. Yeah. I I'm really impressed. Um, I know Jason used it also um, uh, their VPN when he went to Canada to try to make sure he still had a, a US VPN. So we've been using it here. I, I'm really impressed by it. It's very easy to use. Like their website's extremely easy to use too. It has it kind of all in uh, one hub. And then obviously they have an app as well that you can use. So uh, very, very impressed with Aura. Um, and I, I'm even saying it correctly now. They let me know that Aura is not the correct pronunciation. I'm sorry, Aura. Thank you for right. letting me know. Uh, anyway, um, so Aura helps you fight back against those annoying websites that make your personal information public and automatically requesting your removal of info uh, on robocall websites, which is great because I think we all hate those as yeah. well. And I mean, not only does it help reduce that, but it gives you real-time alerts on suspicious, cr suspicious credit inquiries, like someone trying to open a loan or a credit card in your name, like you were mm -hmm. saying, like even changing passwords. Their yeah, VPN allows wild. you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And they protect your devices from viruses, malware, spyware, like all the wares trying to get mm -hmm. into your stuff. No so the bad guys allowed. can't break in. 
or it even helps you manage what your kids can do on their devices. You can restrict specific apps, set screen time limits, and even set focus times to ensure that your st- that your child is doing their homework instead of binge watching swanky disc golf or foundation disc golf on YouTube. That comes later. That's mm-hmm. important, but it comes later, right? And their mm-hmm. password manager lets you Oh man, I'm getting choked up about it. I'm so excited about <laughs> it. Their password manager lets you store uh, and access your online passwords and secure like online passwords securely and conveniently. So maybe you already have an app that does one of those things, but the beauty of Aura is that it lets you have to not download or pay all of those different subscriptions for different apps. Exactly. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online, like you said, all in one place. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with our link. It's in the description. Um, You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds and exposed over those two weeks. It does work. I will let you know that right now. So go to Aura.com slash Foundation Disc Golf, and you can get your free trial started there today. Uh, We have that linked in the description as well. So um, again, thank you, Aura, for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you for letting me know that my identity is safe. That is very comforting. I will, I will say that. So um, thank you or again, and let's bring in Reed today. Welcome to in the bag, Mr. Swanky disc golf himself. Reed, how are you doing? Doing well. Yeah. Hey, we're glad to have you dude. So again, it was a surprise to me. I didn't know until today, but glad to have you on. So love the festive background you have. You have both a pine tree there and it looks like there was a pine tree on the other side of you outside, or maybe it's grass. I can't tell, but um, just my ivy. Okay. Well, <laughs> hey, that looks festive too. So, <laughs> and he's got his merry discmas sweater, dude. It's mm-hmm. just you know, mm-hmm. we're all we're all ready for Christmas. Meanwhile, yeah. Brad and I yeah. out here just like can just close. Uh, you know. Yeah. Normal. I guess maybe the... what we'll have to do is Brad because we have that reunion episode coming up. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll like wear Santa hats or something. Ooh, during... that would be good. That would be good. I love it. That's the I'll do some like fake presents, stack them behind me. So it just looks like I'm in a wall of presents. Okay. I, I'm in. All right. We're dreaming. We're dreaming. I'll wrap yeah. the whole wall. I'm wrapping. It'll be fantastic. Mm. So y'all enough about the future. We're here in the we now are here. with Reed, the man himself. I remember when I first came across Swanky Disc Golf, seeing Reed and being like, man, I want to hang out with that guy. Uh, mm. And now <laughs> it's fun. I now have your phone number. So I feel like Creators Cup. Mm. I mean, we were connected before Creators Cup read, but I feel like Creators Cup brought you and Foundation together. Like it's, it did its job. I'm mm-hmm. already looking forward to next year, for sure. Cannot wait. Absolutely. So, Reed, I don't know if you have you listened to an episode with us before. Dude, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the In the Bag podcast. I'm addicted to Let's every go. podcast on the Foundation Network. Hashtag ad. So, uh, yeah, I no, I'm I'm a big time listener of you guys. I love I love the pod. Thank you. Come on. Well, then you know how it works. So we got a few questions for you. We want people to get to know you. We'll give you a spot at the end uh, for you to absolutely go full shameless plug. Let everyone know what's going down, where they can follow you, what's <laughs> happening. Today's a big day totally. for the Swanky Channel as well. So mm-hmm. we want to make sure that you guys stick around huge promotion coming it's gonna be fantastic you're gonna love it uh but before the promo we need to know not read mr swanky we need to know read the disc golfer so let us know how long you've been playing uh and then what how far do you throw the disc forehand and backhand okay how long i've been playing uh i picked up a disc in 2013 for the first time and played with the first I had a Firebird, a Destroyer, and then the starter set from Innova. And I played with those for five years, just those discs. <laughs> uh, played with the sw- the other swanky guys for a while uh, through college, all that, and did not get serious until about 2019 when I watched, I don't know, the YouTube algorithm hit me with Paul McBeth at the MVP Open in 2018 or 2019, one of those tournaments. And I was hooked on competitive disc golf. I was like, I didn't know you could get good at this. Mm -hmm. So I tried to get good at it. And then Swanky was born about, you know, six months after that when we all started to get into it together. And yeah, so I've been playing seriously for since about 2019. Uh, How far I can throw the disc? Uh, Backhand controlled, I'll give myself 350 controlled. And just a little bit less than that forehand, like 330 is what I think I've said. Um, 
it's just a little bit less than my backhand distance and I can get further, like we said, but it's not controlled at that point. <laughs> it's not golf distance. Yeah. And I'm normally not trying to do much more than that on the course because um, bad things started to happen when I try to go further than that. That's, that's, sure. that's the devil's move, you know? You mm-hmm. got your partner set up Absolutely. and you're like, all right, green light, let's go. Brad, yeah. I, something I noticed like when I when I was really getting into the game and I know we, we still consider you Brad and like the you're not a beginner, but you're you're in the learning phase not that none of us aren't learning Mm -hmm. but i remember playing doubles for a little while and being like i have to go first in doubles because if they give me the green light i like actually don't change anything about Mm -hmm. what i'm doing like my green light is my best golf and it's the only thing i know how to do (laughs) yeah (laughs) are you are you getting to a point where you feel like you can like turn on the green light yet Mm -hmm. yeah i actually prefer to go second if we're playing doubles so I think, I don't know, little, little clutch gene. Not really. I don't have that. I mean, let's just not kid ourselves, but no, I like it. I like the pressure. I like being able to maybe do something different, you know, and maybe usually I can't do it, but I try. Hey, totally fair. Uh, mm-hmm. Same, honestly, as the guy that also goes second, the amount of, mm-hmm. that, that's why second so much more fun, right? Because if they miss it, they can't get upset with you mm-hmm. when you miss it. Cause they just did too. Right. right exactly. True. So read. Talk us through what would you say is the biggest strength of your game right now? The biggest strength of my game is definitely the forehand. And I know a lot of people will say forehand because of the accuracy. You know, you're looking straight forward. And I do feel that. Uh, I've told the other swanky guys a lot that, you know, in a casual round, I might throw 70% backhand. But in a tournament round, I'm throwing 70% forehand. And I'm going to try to make a forehand work whenever I can, because I feel that forehands lead to the fewest mistakes for me. They often produce almost as much distance off the tee and I can throw all the angles forehand. So forehand definitely is the strength. Okay. Nice. Do you have that like Chandler Kramer? That's something I like watching him realized I want to pick up next season is the like forehand turnover roller. Do you ever try throwing that shot? I have tried, but I, that's got to be the hardest shot in disc golf, man. When I saw him throw that, was that at the European Open? I couldn't believe that shot. And that he has that dial, that's unreal. No, I do not have that in the bag. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's a swanky video, or we'll, I'll, I'll head over to Georgia and we'll film it together. But it's a tub, we'll get Lone Star to sponsor it, and we'll just do a tumbleweed challenge. It's just like tumbleweeds only, forehands only. Here we go. Yep, dude, let's do it. Uh, well, maybe we'll learn it that way. After that video, we'll be like, wow, this is easy. Let's do it. Yeah. Trial by fire. I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, Reed, we have your bag in front of us. Silas is going to go ahead and throw it on the screen here. Um, I We were texting a little bit before. I think your bag is super fascinating. I love it. I think that it's very well balanced. So this isn't going to be like a ton of roasting. Uh, and I think something for okay. listeners to notice is that sometimes your bag really is like set right like that you feel good about it you feel confident would you say you feel confident in your bag right now reed i do yeah and that's great so what we want to be careful with is there there comes a moment and you kind of have to make this decision as a player when do i feel like hey this is like i can reach my optimal performance right now or when can i tweak it a little bit a lot of people come on our show and they have like a glaring weakness in their bag all we want to do today is we're going to focus on mid ranges uh near the end because we want to there's one disc in your bag that i want to give some competition because i think if we can challenge that disc or that slot with a different mold we may be able to open up a few more shots for you uh but brad will be the the judge of that if <laughs> awesome if it actually worked so uh, starting out, we want to, we'll just, how about we'll start at the drivers and work our way down and then touch on putters because your putter slots are pretty, pretty dialed. Mm-hmm. So you've got okay. the grim in your bag. You a big cast guy? Uh, not a big cast a guy, uh, not because of their plastic, but I feel like a lot of the molds just weren't for me, but the grim is stellar, a stellar forehand disc. Um, I throw it and a theme you're going to find in my bag is that a lot of forehand discs are forehand discs and a lot of backhand discs are backhand discs. There are probably only five or six bag or five or six discs in my bag that I am comfortable 
throwing all the angles, forehand, backhand, whatever. Um, so the grim doesn't come out for a lot of backhands. It is a lot of forehands. It is a full flight max distance forehand disc. Okay. Max. And so when you're getting max distance on this grim, how are you getting it? Are you like anti flexing it? Is it a hyzer flip flex? What's the, it's a baby hyzer full, full ride S flight fades back a little bit at the end. Awesome. That was my question too, Reed. Do you, um, your typical like go to forehand, are you like a slight anti guy flat? Like what's your typical release point for your forehand? I don't like throwing forehands on Anheuser, so I definitely would prefer to throw it flat or or baby Heiser. Okay. Fascinating. Okay, so we move down to the Enigmas. You've got two Enigmas in your bag. Is one a forehand, one a backhand disc? No, they're both backhand primarily, and they, one is just slightly more overstable. They're very, very, very close to each other. But if there's a wind condition or just, you know, if we're throwing uphill or downhill, I might change which one I'm throwing. It's very slight difference. Okay. Have they been in the bag about the same amount of time and one's just you're trying to beat one in or why the two then? One's about six months younger than the other. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you were just it's a baby brother. A yeah. Okay. Throwing yeah. it a lot and felt like I needed, I needed another option for that backhand okay so let's just round it out then the wraith and the curl what are those two doing the wraith is a one angle forehand and backhand disc distance driver so it never it never turns over for me uh if i'm throwing it on a little bit of hyzer which you'll kind of hear a lot is my my stock release is hyzer so uh if i'm throwing the wraith on a little bit of hyzer it's never going to flip over it rides to flat and fades on both forehand and backhand so that's my reliable, my reliable guy. And then the curl is super understable, uh, way more than the numbers suggest. At least this one that's in my bag is uh, very understable. It kicked the Hades out of my bag. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad, you're the Hades expert here. Walk me through, like, I know some people, there are some runs of Hades that are super flippy. Some that like mm -hmm. have a little bit of stability to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know which ones are which, Brad? Um, I believe that the the first run, like the Domi ones, are more sta overstable, and then like the the stock ones now are, tend to be less or more understable. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Reed. No the the first Hades I had in my bag was a Proto, and I don't know mm. if you guys ever had a Proto Hades, but they were another level of understable. I got mm. my first stock Hades, and I was like, "This is a different disc." <laughs> I don't know for what sure. I'm holding. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I w I'm looking for in that slot understable enough to start on Heiser, flip to or come back. Mm. Okay, that kind of thing. And the curl does that for you. The curl will do that. And if I don't give it enough height, it will burn. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So like more like a minus four, two instead of, cause I think it's like a minus two, two or something like that. According to flight yeah. numbers. Yeah. The, my disc bag said negative two, two. I think I don't, mine doesn't have numbers on it, but yeah. Yeah. Whew. That is okay. That's something special. Lone star doing crazy things in all forms mm -hmm. and fashions. I love it. So, okay. It. So I think that like, I like the balance. I think really my, my challenge to you would be, I would love to see for distance drivers. I would love to see you take one of those enigmas, take the newer one out for a little bit. Like now that you've got it and just see, do I beat in this other one faster now that I don't have the other one to lean on? And that could give you more shot variance in itself. Uh, because do you ever have a moment right between the two enigmas that you're like, you're standing on the box looking at both of them and you're like, uh, I'm going to go with this one. And then it comes out of your hand and it's like, oh no, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> that just happened to me. Yes. I mean, yeah. Occasionally it does happen where I'll throw an enigma and they are actually the same color. So sometimes I'll pull one out and throw just the wrong one. I mean, like that, that will happen. Um, the funny. foil color is different. So, but it's silver versus black. So mm -hmm. maybe you're right, Robbie. Maybe it's a little bit toxic. I don't know. <laughs> but I just threw it at league the other day with the guys and I threw it. And I, it just started flipping and riding right. I was like, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs>
Bro, I, gosh, if you are watching on YouTube, please let us know in the comments. Like that's, we, we, we should have two discs here, but man, I really, I like, that could be a giveaway question right there, Brad. It's like, mm -hmm. let us know your story of you straight up just grab the wrong disc and what yep. happened. Uh -huh. I like that. It has happened to me, bro. I had a phase where all my fairways were blue at one point. Like I switched some Oof. disc around and I was like, how did the, what, what, uh, bro. I, it was such bad golf for a while. I literally just had to be like, this, this is great, <laughs> but it's gotta go. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I need another color. That is totally fair. Speaking of fairways. Okay. So I'm intrigued. Your, your fairway spread is huge, but you have a mm -hmm. couple sneaky ones. So firebirds, I'm just, I'm assuming Sexton and a champion. Yeah, it's a Sexton run. And then, uh, yeah, just a C line board flat, crazy overstable guy. My guy that is rocking the same setup in my bag. That's if you're not familiar with Sexton's, there's lots of information out there. You can walk through that. The two discs that intrigue me the most, the essence, I think people are sleeping on. Uh, it is such a good disc. Josh from overthrow actually is the one that got me onto the essence. Um, he was raving about it. Super fantastic. Is that, what would you say is your farthest flying fairway driver? E, well, probably either the essence or the night strike. I throw them pretty far, both of those pretty far. Cause I can get full flights out of those when I'm throwing them. Um, the others are more one angle shots for the most part. Okay. So you do have two night strikes for those of you who are newer to disc golf. You're like night strike. I've not heard of that mold. <laughs> Welcome to OG disc mania. Um, and I guess they're still doing it now where they're like, Hey, this is a normal disc that we normally make. We'll put a cool stamp on it. Special run <laughs> night strike. Uh, so great name though. Yeah, I mean, the artwork is also amazing. The little snakes, uh, super good. So you're rocking a Night Strike one. First off, bold move, Cotton. I I respect that. <laughs> is that like, is that a disc that you've had for a long time? Or did you find it in like a used bin or a trade or something like that? Dude, I've had that since they came out. Actually, since the Night Strike 2s came out. And I thought I was buying a Night Strike 2 when I bought it. So that's a funny story. I'm really glad I made that mistake because they fly so different. And the Night Strike one is unlike any other FD I've ever picked up. So I love that thing. And Night Strikes are sea line, right? They're or color they glow. Okay. They're, they're color glow sea line. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So is the Night Strike, when you throw that disc, hey, do you have any backups to your Night Strikes? Not for like me personally, <laughs> but I'm wondering like from the standpoint of like confidence while throwing, like will you throw your Night Strikes near water? No, but I do have backup. I have a backup Night Strike 2 that I'm hoarding in my closet. Um, I have not managed to find a backup Night Strike 1. Those things are hard to come by, but uh, I'm confident throwing them. Like I'm not going to lose them hopefully, but not over water, you know. That's fair. not going to happen. That's fair. And then I think the other disc that I like, I'll, I'll moment of honesty here, Brad, you might be better than me at this. And I'm happy for you. If you are, I don't watch a lot of prodigy players in the bags because I find them like to be very repetitive. Uh, like <laughs> they're all sure. basically throwing the same thing. And my generation of players, we had talked about this, I think last week when you watched a prodigy in the bag, when I was coming into the game, you couldn't even get the discs that they were actually talking about because they were special runs and all this. Mm -hmm. So it, it burned me to this. Reed, you rock F twos in your bag and we're not talking Innova F twos like factory sack. No, there's literally a disc called an F two. What, what does it do for you? <laughs> <laughs> These are the golden child of my bag, actually like low key, incredible flyers. Um, they have numbers like a eagle or a T-bird, somewhere in between mm -hmm. an eagle and a T-bird, and uh, they fly like just amazing. They're they're two of my hand and backhand, very comfortable in the hand for either one. I have one that's just slightly more overstable, and one that again, it's just like six months newer, uh, six months younger, and the more beat one has a little bit of turn to it, but always fights back hard. 
And then the other one is more of a one angle flip to flat type of overstable driver. Mm -hmm. It's great for pushing hyzers, stuff that I feel like my Sexton can't quite do because it's too overstable. Um, when the Sexton won't turn, the F2 will. And it's going almost as far as the Firebirds for me. It flies great. I throw it more than any other disc in my bag. Okay. So, Reed, give us a selling point here. Brad, I mean, Brad, have you thrown an F2 before? I've not, no. The closest to me throwing Prodigy, I always eyeball the new FX3 a lot. Okay. Like, I'm like, mm -hmm. that could fit in my bag very well. But other than that, I haven't really thrown any Prodigy. Oh, okay. that's a lie. Through some really beat up A2s, I found the used bin while we're vending, and I like kind of fell in love with it, but I realized it's not a real disc. Continue. That's fair. I, I the A two <laughs> if I was the A two was number three, like when I did my trials of uh disc to replace my AVR X three a while mm. ago. AVR or the A two was number three. Like it was it was the bronze medal. Um mm -hmm. mm. behind the tactic and the pig. So Got it. Nice. Could have, it could have been a different world for us, everyone. <laughs> it could have been a different world. Reed, I want you, because I think a lot of people listening probably have tried the T-Bird in the past. They've tried the Eagle. Um, they've gone out and tried the Evader or something like that. The F2 gets slept on. Give us a give us a selling point. Like, Advertise why should people go try an F2. For one, I think Prodigy's plastic is a little bit slept on. I know that they have had struggles, especially recently, with uh, flashing and production issues. They, that's definitely true, don't get me wrong. But the plastic itself is incredible. I'm a huge fan of 400 plastic. Um, and both of my F2s are like the more opaque run of 400, which is just like money as far as hand feel goes. Um, so I just feel confident holding them. They're really comfortable. And uh, they also, as if you have a T-Bird in the bag, uh, I just think the, the F2 isn't the same disc. I think you could bag both. Um, but the, the F2 is just going to have more to its flight than a T-Bird does. For me, at least, a T-Bird is, uh, you know, it's got that very neutral to slightly overstable where my F2 can do more. It will flip. It will ride more. But it always fights back really hard, which is something like if you've ever thrown an eagle you know what i'm talking about with like a little bit of flip and then a hard bite it's different it's just like it allows you to do more than t-bird different than a t-bird for sure i love that that mm -hmm. i literally i'm working a shift at my shop today i'm gonna see if they have f2s uh, so that is i yeah very curious to try it out my man so that is super good okay so let's the last, the last one, I said there were two discs that were intriguing. The final disc, and I'm sure you thought it was the one that I was going to go to first. You bag a core. I do bag a core. <laughs> I, dude, I remember when Jesse, when Jesse was trying to decide on the name, like real talk, y'all. Uh, this is a little inside exclusive. I don't know if Jesse will ever even hear this. When he was trying to decide on the name for his putter, he called me and he said, hey, man have you ever heard of a disc called a core? And I was like, yeah, super neutral, like mid range by, or I think I said, I think it's a mid range or a fairway by latitude. And he was like, dang it. You actually have heard of it. And I was like, I have, but I literally run a podcast where we talk about plastic. So it's probably an unfair advantage. The number of people that have heard of a core very low. What does a core do for you, man? Oh man. It's like, I, I bag it out of almost spite. Like I, I, I love how it feels in the hand, guys. I, I, I just gained yeah. so much respect for you because you said that. <laughs> okay, that that's okay. a move I play. Go, continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Here, teach you disc. <laughs> I, no, I, I love the core, but it, we have a horrible relationship. Um, it feels better in my hand than any other disc I've ever felt. It's got a slight bead. I don't know what it is about the rim size. My hand fits in it perfect like they were freaking meant to be, you know? And then I throw it, and things tend to go wrong when I throw it, and I don't know why. I want it to work so bad. I'm trying. I'm in therapy with this disc, man. 
<laughs> I want it to work. It just hasn't been working. So we're still working through some issues, me and the core. But it feels incredible. It goes further than a buzz does for me and flies generally about the same. Although, you know, I at this moment, I cannot whip out the core and throw it in a tournament. Things will go wrong. Okay. Is it the Lucid Glimmer run or like the Opto Glimmer? Or I forget what it's called. By the- it is. Yeah, it's the most recent. I think it came in a box. I got it from a buddy that throws only Trilogy plastic. Um, and yeah, I think it came in one of their mis- mystery boxes recently. Okay, it's yeah. that Opto Glimmer run. Yeah, the, the deep purple ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. Fascinating. Uh, and I, <laughs> defini- I definitely, res- like Brad said, ton of respect for you know what? I'm going to make this disc work uh, because <laughs> that is, I had discs in my bag for a while that are doing that. And honestly, right now, if I had to say a disc that I feel that way, it's rates. Like my relationship with rates has gone dark uh, as of late on backhand forehand. Love you. Mm-hmm. Backhand, get out of town, bro. Uh, it is crippling. So moving on to putters, let's do putters. And then we'll close out with uh, our mid ranges. So, okay. uh, I've got, got it off to the right. That's why I'm turned. Um, PA threes and envies public PA threes, throw envies. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Have you ever tried throwing a PA three? Like, do you have any? To I, throw? I do throw them. Uh, I throw them standstill, like an, almost an ultimate toss. Um, if I'm within like 150 feet, I'm throwing the PA three, the envy is going further and straighter um than my pa3 but if i'm stand still i like i like a little toss at the basket with the pa3 it's funny i watched uh hunter this morning ace with a glow pa3 that he put in his bag and took his envies out believe it or not nice let's go he hey he took your advice robbie he said i did this because of the podcast last week (laughs) so just saying baby here Mm -hmm. we go Mm -hmm. baby no okay so that's awesome. What plastic uh, are your envies in? I have an Electron Firm and an Electron Soft that are so, so different from each other, dude. So different. I I filmed a video for Vlogmas, and I got to pull an Electron Soft Envy back out. I was mm-hmm. just reminded of everything I've said here on the podcast. A beat-in Electron Soft Envy is one of the straightest discs that you will ever throw. Like, to me, just like a soft hyzer flip, and it's just... Perfect. Is that is that what sound similar to yours or is yours different? So mine is really beat up and it is kind of warped. I don't know, you know those soft plastics that don't look like a disc anymore. I pull it out and it's got some bends in it and I can't even hold it at one part of it because it's so like bubbled up over the <laughs> um and it throws more like a proxy. It flies more like a proxy. Um, okay. It's kind of, it's very understable. Uh, I put it on baby hyzer, and it'll ride to the right. Um, and that disc, it, it's been run over by a car. It's been done. Uh, a lot of things have happened to it, but I prefer holding the Envy than I do the proxy. So I get that same flight, that understable putter flight with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that out of respect, and we talked about that a lot on the show as well, is if you love the Envy, try out the proxy, um, because the hand feel is different, but it's not, like, so drastically different. I feel like you can trick your hand and your mind into thinking you're holding the same disc. True. Let's talk mid-ranges. Uh, there's two mid-ranges we want to talk about, and then, Brad, I want you to, I got some questions for you regarding what you did today. Great. Um Buzz SS and the MD. This is like a an actual MD. Yeah, C line MD. Yeah, OG. Okay, this man has. If I mean, bro, like you better not let people know what car you drive. Uh, the, 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 this <laughs> maniac's gonna be breaking into your car yep. and uh, stealing your bag just for do these it, three discs right here. Uh, so, That's my baby right there. So the MD, walk me through the MD and the Buzz SS. What do they do differently? The MD flies more like a putter. 
Um, it, it's like a really long putter. It flies slow. It turns slow. If I put it on hyzer, it'll flip up to flat and go straight. Okay. Um, the Buzz SS, the one I have, is a lot more understable. Um, very flat top, so it's one of the it's the only mid I throw forehand because um, it feels really good. Well, okay, other than some other mids, I guess that we haven't discussed yet that I would have considered putters, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the Buzz SS, uh, it it flies uh, very understable. If I put it on a forehand very gently, it'll still ride to the left the whole way of its flight um but it it turns quicker than the md does it's a it's a drastically different flight for me where i can get a lot of late turn late movement out of the md the buzz ss is just turning and going it just starts moving a lot quicker right or left depending on you know back end or forehand so and i can get it to go straight with hyzer but you know that's that's on a fly release yeah Okay. Very, very curious, my man. Very curious. Okay. I like, I want, I wondered if there was crossover, but hearing the MD flies more like a putter makes a lot of sense to me mm-hmm. because there's that, like, I know for instance, like I'll throw a pole cat and I just feel like I smashed it and then I'm just watching it and it's just still not going anywhere. Uh, and you're like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. If I were to throw in a little bit of a faster disc, that would be a hundred feet farther right now. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense with the MD. And I think in light of like it gives you that balance. And can you throw because it's in C line, do you feel like you can put a little more on it than necessarily like say, I guess the next option down would be going to that electron soft envy, like to get the same flights? Yeah, it's almost a different flight because the I have an Envy that's more overstable and an Envy that's more understable, and the MD is just like dead straight on a little bit of hyzer or flat. It's just a little bit of gradual turn. And so I do I am able to put a lot more on it, but I can also back off of it and get that get that MV straight MV flight out of it. Awesome. Yeah. So I do a lot more throwing that disc dead straight. Okay. So uh, yeah, the between so you would say the NV kind of like makes a parentheses, the NVs make a parentheses around the MD in terms of shot availability. Yeah, I'm also trying to work a third NV into the bag and beat up that other one to get it dead straight. I'd sort of weren't working its way over there. It'd be great if it could get there. But <laughs> right. maybe one day we'll have a triple NV bag. That would be amazing. Run it over with a car, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, and right. you might be good. Yeah, it works. <laughs> so, okay. So you had mentioned two other mid ranges that you would consider putters. I, I put them in like approach category, the zone, a zone is a zone. You know, we talk mm-hmm. about the zone. Everybody knows the zone. If you like getting, bur- like getting bogeys and you like, uh, you know, like messing up your up shots, mm-hmm. the zone is the disc for you. Just <laughs> lean into it. Love it. Um, I can't, but the harpoon. So Lone Star showing up again. Uh, the harpoon. Describe what you do with the harpoon. And then, Brad, I want you to tell us what you went out and tried. Because the harpoon is the disc that we're going to try to give some competition today. Okay, yeah. The harpoon flies and does what I want the core to do. Um, but it actually does it. It does it well. Um, it's very strong. It's not really a straight flying disc. I wouldn't describe it like that. It has a lot of movement. Um, it turns like an approach disc normally doesn't before it bites back. Like it's got almost an F2, like this flight I described in the F2 flight for me. It will turn as a four speed and fight back at the end, uh, which is great. I love it. Um, I don't find myself turning to it a ton in in rounds, but in just when I'm out in the field throwing my bag, I love what it's doing, so it's there. But yeah, I don't turn to it a whole lot. Okay. So competition is welcome almost to see if we can get something. <laughs> the door in there is open that uh, you might turn to. So Brad, what did you go try today? All right. So today I tried CAC Z and c1 or sorry k1 from castaplas and uh 
Apex Swirly Mustang from Mint. Um, so yeah, I, I'll talk about feel, Robbie, and then I, I would love if you ask me questions about it because I think you definitely have something in mind, and I already know probably what I'm going to recommend to read if it were up to me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, but feel, they both feel really great. That's the problem. I love K1 plastic. I don't really have any in my bag, but I love how it feels. Um, and then this uh, Apex Swirly Mustang, I've felt them a bunch in the warehouse. And um, the thing, and this will come up later as well, the thing that I love about the Mustang is I fan grip all of my mids. And this has a perfect mm -hmm. groove in this, and I love it. Uh, Cax feel, Cax Z feels great. Um, even if I can like, I can actually feel some of the embossing. It's like a nice little grip point for this type of grip, but man, this Mustang feels so good in my hand. I can't even describe to you how good it feels. Guess which one I like Reed. Couldn't be the Mustang, no, right? No, <laughs> definitely not. All right. Sorry. Go ahead, Robin. What questions do you have for me? So you threw these, you threw these out in the field, uh, mm -hmm. Did, how did you feel about like the stability of them? Would you consider them straight to overstable, overstable? Mm -hmm. What was your vibe? So what I liked about both of these discs, they both had a very similar flight, um, honestly. But what I liked about them, even for me, like I have been working so hard on a flat release on backhand. I'm getting there, but I'll occasionally give a little ante still, which I hate, but it happens. Um, they were both stable enough that if I caught it on a little bit of ante, they would turn a little bit, but they would always come back to straight. Um, if I hit them straight, they would go very straight, but then have a little bit of finish on them for me, like a very good amount of finish, if that makes sense. So if I needed a shot, let's say I needed a tunnel shot, and then but I still needed it to go left at the end, like this, that's the disc. Either one of these would be great for that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that how like distance wise, how did you feel like they flew compared to, I know you've thrown buzzes in the past, things like that or not. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh, what is it? It's I'd the, compare both the these to my net. Yeah. Nebula. My nebula. I, I would compare them both to my nebula. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I was going with that. Um, the Mustang flies so much farther than both the cac -Z and my nebula i have to like kill my nebula to get it to go as far as the mustang did at like 70 percent power like the mustang just wanted to stay in the air for me uh cac -Z flew very comparable to my nebula so i uh, if i'm throwing 70 percent power 75 percent power they're gonna go like 250 270 somewhere in that like that range um the Mustang, I threw it hard one time, and I underestimated how far this fence was, and I threw it over the fence, and I threw it like 70 feet past the Cac Z. So, I mean, I could, I would feel comfortable throwing a 300 foot plus hole with the Mustang. Wow. Uh, so, Cac Z is a six speed. Did you feel like it flew more like a fairway, or did you feel like it flew more like a mid range? The Cac Z, I feel like it flew more like a mid range, personally, for me. Um, same thing with the Mustang, obviously too. They, they both, they feel like, to me, they feel like mid ranges, I guess, to be fair, the CAG Z is starting to get that, like that more sharp point, like you would get for a fair ride driver does feel a little faster, but I didn't throw faster for me. Okay. Reed, do you have experience with either of these molds? I did have a glow CAG Z in the bag for a while. Um, and it sort of fell off in the same way that a lot of overstable mids have had bag. They just weren't being thrown. And it got almost the same way that I'm feeling about the harpoon too. I love the harpoon, but it's not getting thrown a whole lot, especially in tournament rounds. So it's like, I don't know, like these overstable mids, the cactus Z, it just fell out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I wanted to, love the cat z but i just didn't like i definitely didn't fall in love with it I, I think i just i had high expectation i think it had more i expected more out of it than i got it was just i'm like oh this plastic feels great uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna be great i'm gonna have a i'm gonna i thought i was honestly gonna love the cat z way more than the mustang it was very opposite it just was the cat z was underwhelming it was just okay this is a good over straight over stable mid it's okay I could see why people would throw it. Yeah. I'm not going to throw it. Okay. So Brad, if you had to recommend a disc to read 
and a surprising turn of events, what would you recommend? Definitely the Mustang. Uh, and again, I don't, I haven't thrown the other plastics of the Mustang. Wow. Big shocker, right? Plot twist. Um, well, <laughs> the thing that surprises me about, the, and I haven't thrown it in any other plastic other than this apex swirl they just put out. So I'd be curious to see how the plastic type change, like the flight of the disc, whether, you know, mm -hmm. if they're like eternal plastic, if that makes it more overstable, which in my experience, that plastic is more overstable. Yeah. Um, the reason I, I would recommend it is like, especially after hearing your like hate fest kind of, but love fest with the core and then like the harpoon, mm. there's like a clear gap right here. And this Mustang I think will fit, would fit right there. And I think the, the shot you want out of your core, maybe you could get with a Mustang, maybe in a different plastic and then also have the like apex for a more overstable option. And I think you would grab it and not have to worry about the harpoon, harpoon or the core. I think it could cover, multiple slots right there in that gap the one gap you i can really see that you have um i like this mustang so much i'm having like this very internal debate the whole time if it looked like i was thinking like i was thinking the whole time i'm like am i gonna have to take the nebula out of my bag and i love my nebula everybody <laughs> knows i love my nebula but it, it like it did what i want my nebula to do with like some finesse where i feel like i have to really throw the nebula hard to do it mm -hmm. and to get the mm -hmm. same distance yeah and I will say Georgia golf has a lot of woods. So mm -hmm. finesse is finesse is friend uh, instead yep. of raw power for sure. Mm -hmm. So Indeed. Reed, would you be willing to, if we sent you this Mustang, would you be willing to try it out and competition with the harpoon and see, because really I, my curiosity would just be like, if the heart, if the Mustang would give you enough distance that you wouldn't have to feel like, Oh, I've got to step up to, the f2 like it would actually give you some controlled options especially i'm thinking of like mulberry hole one like in the straight position or something like that it sounds like it could be a perfect fit over having to shape something else or something like that dude you're speaking my language i would absolutely try it out that's what we do here <laughs> <laughs> we test this um and i got a tournament at mulberry on saturday so uh maybe it gets down here and maybe just maybe i give it a toss on hole one we'll see <laughs> love that well we will definitely send it your way um also just another thought sorry i'm stuck on like the multiple plastic mustang thing but yeah. um i do i know they make it and forgive me i don't know if they call their base plastic but um they do make that in base plastic too. So again, coming back to the core situation, if you could have that in base plastic and beat it in a little bit, I think it's going to fit in that slot too. I think you have an opportunity Reed. I think you have an opportunity to mold minimalize in that category where there's a hole. So final thought on that. Oh, absolutely. I'm excited about that, man. I, so much of my bag is based around comfort and you guys are helping me in this area in my quest to find a comfortable overstable mid mm -hmm. Is, which is something that I just have not found. I'm excited. I'm excited about the groove you talked about with mm -hmm. the with this disc, the Mustang, because that definitely is something I like. You in can a probably mid. see it even like that's how. Yeah, yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I was very uh, comfortable disc. Even in this plastic, the Apex is a little obviously more premium. And the thing I like about their Apex plastic is. Typically, when I'm going to like an ESP or something more premium like that, I'll be I'll be like, uh, maybe I should put a little chalk on. I actually feel like it's more slippery if I put chalk on. Like I don't feel like I need it. It's grippy enough that I don't feel like I need to chalk up for it. So, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. For what well, it's worth, Reed. Let us know. Let the people know if they have been living under a rock and they're like, hey, we keep hearing the word swanky. I didn't realize that was like a word people were still using these days. Mm -hmm. Let us let, let the people know what's going on with you swanky. Where can they find you? What's happening with swanky shameless plug time. Go. Yeah, absolutely. You've not been on living under a rock. We're the only ones using the word swanky still, <laughs> um, but you can find us at swanky disc golf on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and everywhere else on your social media platforms. Today starts disc miss December 1st. Mm -hmm. We're super excited. We're going to be dropping a video every single day of December and uh, we're trying to push for 30,000 subscribers. We're giving away a Simon Lazat grip bag full of awesome discs, 25 discs crammed in there. Um, so, yeah, guys, go check us out. We're, we're having a lot of fun, and uh, 
uh, we're looking forward to uh, to doing some videos with Robbie later. And yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a ton of people on the channel, so we're excited. Come on. Well, y'all, I'm a big fan of Swanky. I'm a big fan of Reed. He uh, he definitely another beautiful reason we could have Reed on today is that the beard game is strong with this one. So it is. he was not by any means intimidated by the in the bag <laughs> beard crew. So <laughs> thank you, Reed, for coming on, man. Uh, we look forward to having you on for the recap episode and hear how this uh, hear how the Mustang flies for you. Dude, I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been a blast. I love I love talking about my bag, obviously. And uh, you guys are so wise. It's been uh, it's been great talking to you. Thanks, man. We'd love to have you on. Thank you. We'll see you soon. It's like, guys, I hope that when you listen to episodes like this, you can tell the fun that we're having Mm -hmm. while being on the episode. And I I'm a firm believer, Brad. I think it makes it hopefully a better listen for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Reed's a great guest. I mean, he's obviously a little seasoned on talking about disc golf. So that that's always great. But um, I, I think it's really cool, especially, and I can always tell when, how long the person has been playing based on like their in the bag chart that we see, because you'll start to see everything creep over on that more stable side, which is always pretty interesting. Um, but he has, he's done a really great job, you know, fleshing out his bag and making it very balanced. So I, I do like the challenge. You know, I never know the challenge. It's really your challenge, Robbie. So I shouldn't say I love it, but it's always cool to find that little like niche part that can maybe combine some molds for them or really give them something that they've been looking for. Absolutely. And I mean, that's when I, at first I was like, man, I'm really going to struggle to like challenge his harpoon. But then for him to even say like, I've got the core and the harpoon that I love the feel of them, but they're just not flying great for me. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, a great moment if you're listening to be like, hey, there has to be an option out there. If I think that this flight or this slot should exist, and it does, mm-hmm. there's enough plastic out there. We're not living in 2012 where there was four options and that's it. Oh, you didn't like a buzzer or a rock three? See ya. Good luck, brother. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So no, I think uh, it was a great episode. Hopefully everyone out there liked it as well. Yeah. Well, Brad, it's Black Friday has come and gone. We're at the end of Cyber Week. Yeah. It, it Do was... you have anything new in the warehouse or are y'all just basically running on like empty now? So we, we still have plenty. We put up a ton of, I mean, I think we restocked like close to a hundred molds before Black Friday. Um, shelves are looking a little bare. There's still some treasure in there if you dig around a little bit. Um, when this comes out on Friday, we do have uh, some MVP dropping on Friday. So the stock glow resistor is releasing. Ooh. So great disc. And then also um, the rhythm. They're, I believe, re releasing the rhythm, correct? Um, so. But it has a cool drummer stamp on the special edition one, as well as like a stock um, rhythm as well. And Neutron, we have both of those dropping. So um, rhythm is another one I've been like, I like the feel of the rhythm as well. Um, But it kind of fits in like that jackalope slot kind of for me. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Jack, me and the jackalope, talking about uh, Reed's core, me and the jackalope have been feuding a little bit lately. I just... I feel like I can, I'm either like overdoing what it's supposed to do or it doesn't do what I want it to do. I just can't find like the love that I had for it initially. But yeah. I think it's just like with everything. Um, but we do, we ironically enough, we do have Jack Loves restocking uh, Diamondbacks coming in. Um, I did get some like misprint X out mint discs that are just kind of random. Those will be up as well uh, on Friday. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of uh, disc craft molds still obviously up, a bunch of different ver- varieties of vultures and undertakers and scorches, and we're trying to really spread out the variety of plastic and molds for disc craft as well. And there are there are a few. Um, oh, Champ Toros. We have Champ Toros left, which I can't believe. Wow. So those are there too. So check all that stuff out. Um, Bogey Bro sticker packs are new accessories. We've got new water bottles in, new towels. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's all there. If you look at our, uh, recently restocked sec- section and new release section on the website, that'll kind of guide you to what's, what's left over from black Friday. So, and then, uh, I, I'm not sure. I think I saw something that Silas had posted on foundation disc store. Is that mm-hmm. a local thing only or all the, the 25 days of Christmas that we're doing? No, yeah. that is both online and that is both in store. So, um, 
online or a retail store here in Forest. Uh, we're picking a different disc every day, uh, the first 25 days of December. And that disc is going to be, that mold is going to be 15% uh, off that particular day. So every day is going to be a new mold. So yeah, thanks for reminding me. That's going to be a, a fun thing we're doing as well. So check out really Instagram, Twitter, any of the socials. It'll all be on there daily to see what mold is 15% off. Dude, come on. All the deals, y'all. If you mm -hmm. are still looking for Christmas presents uh, or holiday presents or whatever for mm -hmm. your loved ones, or you're like trying to drop that hint on, you know, the, uh, the loved one in your life is like, I don't know what to buy for Tommy. Yeah. Tommy, well, we got you. Mm -hmm. We so. do got you. Check it out, foundationdisc.com. Thank you again for them supporting us uh, for and making really this whole podcast possible. Mm -hmm. And Brad, another great episode. We'll hit them with uh, what do they do if it's good? Hey, you keep it in the bag. We'll see you all next week for episode 32. 32? See you all.